So this little PC rig you see beside me is the Inwin Choppin and it's going to host a really awesome build. I'm going to be using it for editing 4K footage while I'm on the road and also since I'm leaving for PAX Oz in literally less than 12 hours, I need something to build quick. I need it to be small and even smaller than some of those mini ITX PCs I've built in the past and they've been really small but this thing is extremely small. It's almost the size of my hand. It's just that small. So let's find out what we've got in this PC and how it performs as well. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with another mini ITX build. And first of all, I'm gonna say DDR4 memory prices are just ridiculously expensive at the moment. I couldn't believe it. The kit that I bought last year at PAX America for $115, this was two 16 gigabyte sticks of Crucial Ballistics, got it for a really good deal at Micro Center. This memory is now $315 on Amazon. I couldn't believe it, $200 price hike from what I originally paid for it. Now this build would have came to about $900 if you guys paid the same what I paid for some of the parts along the way, if that makes any sense. But this build will now cost you $1,163 to build. It is quite expensive, of course. On that note, I will put some cheaper alternatives in the description below if you wanna build something similar but you want it to be for a home theater PC, for example. But what we have here today is strictly a video editing PC. So there's actually no graphics card installed. And you're probably wondering, don't you need CUDA support? And the answer is yes and no. CUDA support I find generally works when you're putting in effects, you're color balancing, and it also does speed up the final render time. But since I'm traveling, usually I'm doing long interviews and also showing off the latest products. And you don't really need a lot of color balancing and fancy effects for that. So something like this with the six core i5-8400 will do an excellent job. Now, I recently tested this six core CPU from the Coffee Lake lineup, and it's really good value for money. Not only that, it just sips power. It doesn't use much power at all, especially compared to the overclockable i7-8700K, and even its bigger variant, the i5-8600K, when they're both overclocked, they use a considerable amount more power. Now, since this case only has a 150 watt power supply in it, I wanna keep the power consumption low, but I also need the power. So the i5-8400 is perfect for this build. And as rock, as you can see behind me, they've sent out two Z370 Mini ITX motherboards. I also bought two i5-8400s and also two in-win choppins. So I will be doing a giveaway of one of these in-win choppins to you guys in the next week or so. It's coming in early November. I'll be teaming up with three other tech channels. So stay tuned for that. Stay subscribed with notifications on because you're not gonna wanna miss this giveaway of one of these little sexy cases here. Now getting back on topic with the parts, the i5-8400, $187, that's what I paid for it, and it should be back in stock pretty soon. So definitely worth the money. It also comes with a cooler, does a pretty good job. You can hear it beside me, it's currently on, and it's really quiet. Now the in-win choppin', which is the best part of this build, I absolutely love this case. I saw it online, the photos, I got recommended it by a friend, and then I got it in the flesh, and it was even better than what I thought it would be in the photos and what I heard about it. All metal construction, absolutely love this case. It's got the mesh on the sides, on the top, and also it's got USB 3.0 at the front, audio in and out ports, and a 150 watt power supply, which is bronze rated, included at the bottom. This is a small form factor power supply, and the cables are all black as well. And the cable management in this case is so easy, which really surprised me for a mini ITX case. Also at the rear, you can mount a 3.5 inch hard drive and an SSD or two SSDs if you wish. Now the Z370 mini ITX board from ASRock, this comes included with an NVMe slot, so you can mount one of those. It's also a feature pack board, three fan headers, four pin fan headers, two RAM slots, and a USB 3 front out. It's also got a seven phase VRM and wireless Bluetooth included. But for the pricing with the in-win chopper, this is where things get a little bit tricky. I couldn't find this for sale anywhere in the US. And in fact, the cheapest price you could get it for in the US was getting it shipped from someone on eBay in Australia, which came to around 135 USD, which actually isn't too bad. Now, if you're in Australia, you can pick this up from PC case gear like I did for 109 Australian dollars. This is the black version. They also have the silver version too, though I do prefer the black version. And they include the green, orange, and blue, I think, and red color bands that you can use to change the build up a little bit if you so wish. 
Now touching on the pricing with the Mini ITX Z370 motherboard, this is the Fatality version, really good VRM as I said before, and it comes in at $180. So it is feature packed, but it is a little bit expensive, especially for a Mini ITX board. They do have the cheaper ITX AC version, which comes in at $135. You can also get a $10 rebate. So at $125, that motherboard is definitely representing pretty good value for money. Even on an 8400, because you can then overclock the memory and even little things like the B clock, I'll bump that up 3% and that'll give you a little performance boost, especially compared to the B360 motherboards, which will be more expensive than standard B360 motherboards if they're in the mini ITX format. That was for the last component in this build, the storage. We're going with the one terabyte SSD from Corsair. Now this is a lot of storage for an SSD. Although if you're on the road like me editing 4K video footage with 100 megabits per second, a one terabyte SSD can quickly fill up. Before you know it, you're juggling space and it's just a nightmare if you don't have enough storage on your hands. Though you can step it down, of course, for much cheaper. There are 240 gigabyte SSDs for around $75, especially if you're making a home theater PC. Something like that will come in a lot cheaper. Now this brings the total cost of this build to $1163, which is really expensive for what it is. The DDR4 memory prices just simply make this build exorbitantly expensive. It'd come in at around 900 and something dollars if it wasn't for that price hike on the DDR4 memory. But keep in mind, I need something like this for editing 4K footage on the road. I can't compromise any more than I have. Though there is a little bit of good news to come out of this if you are an Aussie, you can pick this whole build up for around 1,374 Australian dollars, which brings it in at 1,059 USD in relative price parity purchasing terms. That just simply means if you were to convert the Australian dollars into US dollars, that's what the price would be in USD. Though we do pay 10% GST tax as well, so the build's looking pretty good in Australia. I mean, the prices in the US to build something like this is just simply a ripoff at the moment. But anyway guys, enough talking about the price of this thing, let's talk about the performance. The 8400, we can get this thing to around 950 Cinebench score out of the box. I will be tuning it a little bit more and of course undervolting it to see the best settings that I can get on this current setup. Though what about gaming? Of course, I'm using the onboard Intel graphics, which isn't that good, though the performance actually surprised me. When it came to 1080p gaming, Dota 2 at 1080p on the lowest settings, but with 100% resolution scale, was pulling around 60 to 80 frames per second, which was absolutely fine for an enjoyable experience. And also on that note, it was extremely snappy. Moving over to CSGO, this is where things got a little bit weird. 1080p was kind of like 60 frames per second. It was okay, but it was stuttering in clutch battles. So I did have to drop it to 720p and it was at that stage that the FPS did boost a little. There was still some minor stutters going on. So it was a little bit weird in CSGO, though I did manage to get some frags at 720p settings. And of course, I know you guys would get angry if I didn't test out PUBG. How does it perform in Player Unknown's Battlegrounds? Well, it was terrible to say the least. 720p lower settings, very low, and now even dropped it down to 70% resolution scale, I think. And we got around 15 to 20 frames per second. And it was funny because even though the frame rates were horrible, they were actually paced out extremely well. This was the, if I dare say it, the smoothest 15 to 20 FPS I've ever had in my life. I could actually frag some people on these settings, though when it came to the end game, I really couldn't see the players that well. Aiming was so hard because it was just literally pixels on my screen. It was just a horrible picture to begin with. I'd like to play at least at 1080p, very low settings to actually do well at this game. And of course the main task at hand, video editing, this thing is going to perform really well when I'm using it for Adobe Premiere Pro and of course Adobe Audition. It is extremely small as well. I'll be able to put it in my bag with my camera gear for PAX Oz and also next month for the event in Bangkok. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this little video on the Inwin Choppin. It is a fantastic case and it's actually been released for quite some time now. I just was unaware of it. But honestly, with the new Coffee Lake chips, the six cores, the 8400 in particular, with this case and a mini ITX board, it is gonna be an absolutely amazing combo for someone who needs it for what I need it for, and that's mobile video editing. So powerful, so small, can highly recommend it, though the prices 
really keep your eyes out for deals, especially on DDR4 memory. Anyway guys, if you have any questions about the Inwin Choppin, then let me know in the comments section below. What do you think of it? And also if you like the silver version better, love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And also stay tuned because there's going to be a big giveaway coming, which I'll be giving away here on the channel and also teaming up with three other tech channels and they'll all be giving away a PC of their own. It should be an international giveaway, so stay tuned for that. And also if you're going to PAX Australia, in Melbourne, let me know. I look forward to seeing you there, having a chat, catching up, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.